Today on Xboxer Briefs, we take a brief look at the only game on the Xbox that encourages the consumption of brains. This is Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse. It's 1959 in Pleasantville-esque Punchbowl, Pennsylvania, a city that amplifies many of the tropes of 50s-era TV and movies, only with service robots and hovering cars, kind of like Fallout, minus the bombs and destruction. Only today, you rise from your grave as Stubbs, a zombie who is back to cause some mayhem in this metropolitan paradise. You'll guide Stubbs through 13 levels, taking you through and around Punchbowl in search of something, or maybe someone. Stubbs has a number of attacks at his disposal, like toxic flatulence, gut grenades, and the ability to remove his head and bowl it at enemies with explosive results. Stubbs can also remove his hand and attach it to enemies possessing them, now allowing you to use their weapons to take out other enemies. Kill an enemy with anything other than bullets, and they will rise as zombies and shamble their way around levels attacking by your side. Being a zombie, Stubbs fuels these powers by consuming the brains of civilians, police, militia, and scientists he encounters. This can be done by either sneaking up on them, or after weakening them with a few slashes from your claws. One thing to consider as you play the game is the size of your zombie horde, as that horde may clear out enemies long before you get there. In that case, there will be less brains for you, and as a result, less use of your abilities. Whether this is a good or bad thing depends on your playstyle, but later in the game, just having a big enough horde to act as bullet sponges may be just as much of an advantage as a well-placed gut grenade. The game was built on the Halo engine, prominently noted on the cover of the game, but from a third-person perspective. Similarities are there, Stubbs has grenades and a floaty jump, and health regeneration after a brief stretch. At the same time, Stubbs controls a little sluggish, which is a design choice that was to be expected, I mean, he is a zombie. However, he will pick up his pace a bit if you keep moving in one direction for long enough. Attacks land with consistency, but knowing how many hits do I need to get the eat brains prompt but not kill this enemy can be a frustration if you've exhausted all your powers. Stubbs also takes the opportunity to drive a few different vehicles throughout the game to mixed results. The Sodomatic feels a lot like Halo's Warthog complete with a side passenger and a sod cannon, but it is super slow and less responsive than Master Chief's nearly indestructible green jeep. Driving the farm tractor is a test of patience, as enemies hide among crops that can't be driven over, and you have no projectile weapon with which to defend yourself. You'll also come across some military-grade vehicles in the later stages of the game that you can commandeer if you take out the driver. The overall atmosphere of this game is great, and I love the musical touches of modern artists covering 1950s era tunes, such as Death Cab for Cutie performing Earth Angel, and the Ray Vanettes take on My Boyfriend's Back. This is most prominent on the title screen and during one of the early boss battles, which instead of being combat focused, instead plays out like a game of Simon. The voice acting can come across a little hokey at times, but fits the aesthetic of the world, and some of the things these people yell as you eat their brains. Wow. I can feel it. Chewing! Stubbs is currently backwards compatible with the Xbox 360 and was briefly available as an Xbox Originals download from the live marketplace before its removal in 2012 due to technical issues. A sequel had also been planned, but Wide Load Games was purchased by Disney in 2009, so a follow-up was pushed aside in favor of games featuring Disney properties and eventually an Avengers mobile game. Unfortunately, Wide Load was closed in 2014 after corporate restructuring. Fans of zombie media should be huge fans of Stubbs. It takes a unique angle of letting you be the bad guy. Everything has a cartoony aspect to it, so it's easy on the eyes, but can be a little dark at times. The game is on the shorter side, clocking in around seven and a half hours for the campaign, and with the inclusion of a two-player mode and harder difficulties, those looking for replayability will find exactly that. From a collector's perspective, this game is sought after being a system exclusive and tagged by some as a hidden gem, so if you're on the fence, I'd suggest finding it now. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and share it with someone who may be missing out on some of the great games for the original Xbox. 
I also stream my recording sessions that I use for these videos live on Twitch, and the link to my channel can be found in the description below. I hope to see you in chat sometime soon. That should about do it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.